I am still trying to get over this silly cold. I just used a nasal wash, so right now everything is just kind of, I feel like I can't breathe out of either side of my nose, so I probably sound very nasally, and I'm sorry for that. But let me grab my coffee. Ugh, I've just made a second cup. Normally I have one cup, and it's actually only half-calf, but one thing about me whenever I'm sick, I don't know, I feel like I'm just so weird because I think a lot of people just sleep and sleep and sleep and for me I feel like it's the opposite. I can't sleep and so I have to take Benadryl or NyQuil or something to be able to sleep through the night and I did not have any more Benadryl last night and I picked some up. It was in my grocery order so I picked it up this morning but I took my last one Friday night and so I didn't have one last night so I woke up at 3.30 this morning so definitely a sleepy day but still have some things to get done i recently stopped buying plant milk from the store i think it's really just the price that was the motivator the almond milk i don't feel like is super terrible the great value brand that i get from walmart the unsweetened almond milk is three dollars for a half gallon the oat milk is four dollars and it's less than a half gallon it's i think 52 ounces so like a really random off size, but between the price and then all of the preservatives and things that they put in it as well, I thought it was more cost effective, cost effective and healthier to make my own. So I toyed with that last week and I made some and it turned out great. So I am gonna show you how I did that in today's video. And so I'm gonna do, the almonds have actually been soaking, you're supposed to soak them overnight and they've been in there for two days because I've been sick. So hopefully they'll still turn out okay and not be like mush or something, but um, we're gonna get that done. And really that's all I have on the agenda for today. Um, I'm just gonna keep doing some more resting. I do have um, today's advent puzzle to put together, so I might show you that, um, but yeah, really, I think it's just going to be a pretty down Sunday, and I don't even know the rest of this week yet. I'm just kind of playing it by ear and seeing how long this stuff's going to last. Today is day five, and I really thought that it would be gone by now, because normally for me, a cold, if I get one, it's like two days and it's gone, but I don't know. This must be some new cold virus that's going around that my body's definitely not recognizing, so... And it's not terrible. I don't feel bad energy-wise and everything. I feel normal but my nose just won't stop running and it's driving me crazy so um anyway enough chit chat let's get this plant milk made. all right i'm gonna start with the oat milk and for oat milk you want very very cold water because you don't want to make oatmeal right so i use refrigerated water i did drop a few ice cubes in there just to make sure it's good and cold i'm gonna take those out now because i'm not making a smoothie either <laughs> Um, so what I did is I've got two thirds of a cup of oats and four cups of water. So I'm gonna pour that into this blender and then we are going to blend for about 30 to 45 seconds. And if you want to add like vanilla or sugar, which I wouldn't recommend, but if you like your sweetened, or really, if you want your sweetened, what I would suggest is throwing in some a couple of dates um, or maybe some maple syrup um, or a pinch of salt. If you want to do any of that, you can at this point, but I want to keep it simple, just oats and water. Now we're going to strain it through a cheesecloth and I think what I'm going to do, they make nut milk bags too and I do believe since I've done this and I've had success with it that I'm going to go ahead and invest in a nut milk bag. Just 
give that a little squeeze. Let's get all the milk out. Then I'll give this a rinse because I'm going to use it also for the almond milk. And then I have these labeled on the lids. So the spoon is oat milk. So I'm just going to pour it in and refrigerate it. Standard juice bottles I picked I had one already that I got from Aldi's a few years ago and then I picked up this one from Walmart last week for like three dollars okay I'm gonna rinse this put more water in it and we're gonna move on to the almond milk okay so for almond milk it is you take one cup of almonds for four cups of water so it's the exact same mixture as hummingbird nectar but with the almonds you have to soak them in the refrigerator overnight before you use them. And as I said earlier, these have actually been in there for like two days because I intended to make it a couple days ago and I just didn't feel well enough. So I put it off, but I drained all of the liquid off this morning and I have it ready to go. Okay, now the water. for this one you need to blend for one minute so I'm going to go ahead and have my Alexa set a timer while I do this so Alexa set a timer for one minute good morning Lauren one minute starting now Alexa cancel So I'm ready to pour this in its container. And so it really only fills about half the container or so. I don't know why this thing keeps doing this. It's got a spout on it, so it's not supposed to spill. Like I was saying, I make a batch that fills this bottle about halfway. And the reason that I don't worry about filling it all the way up, when you make homemade plant milks like this, obviously they don't have any preservatives or anything in them. So they're really only good for a few days. Whereas if you buy them from the store, it's a few weeks, which, you know, honestly is concerning. But so I wanna make sure that I'm not making more than I'm gonna use in a few days. And I do use this stuff pretty regularly. I make matcha lattes with my oat milk on a daily basis. And I use almond milk in all of my cooking and stuff. So it definitely gets used but I'm afraid if I filled both of them to the brim, they wouldn't. Um, and as far as nut milks, you can use any nut that you want. I would just Google and see your nut to liquid ratio and make sure you have that right and see if there's any requirements for soaking and for how long um, before you do it. But this is almond and oat. These are the primary two that I use. And honestly, I really like them. So I think I'm gonna keep them. made a purchase. Um, something that I haven't talked really much about on here yet, but I want to go ahead and give you the full scoop on. Um, so I am a certified holistic nutritionist. I don't 
practice. You know, I'm not a nutrition coach or anything like that. I use it specifically for my own information. And so my bachelor's degree from UMass Amherst is in journalism and my focus is on nutrition. And so I got my certification as kind of a supplement so that I could write about it. And I do write about it in a blog. It is called Beatitudes, B-E-E-T, like the root vegetable beet. So um, I always have that linked in the description box. So if you wanted to check that out, you can feel free to do so. Um, I've definitely lapsed on it a little bit over the last couple of years and have recently kind of picked back up writing for it again. Um, but nutrition is something that I do want to cover on here with you as well. And one of the things that I have to do is every two years we have to, so basically eight continuing education credits per year for two years for a total of 16 continuing education credits or CECs in a two year period is a requirement to renew our certification. And so one of the things that I've just done here a few minutes ago was purchased a new course so that I can renew my certificate is due, I believe in June of this coming up year of 2024. So the course that I purchased was um, specifically geared towards like brain health and Alzheimer's disease, or not Alzheimer's, sorry, Parkinson's disease. Um, so my stepdad, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's and then he was undiagnosed and then he was diagnosed again, and then he was undiagnosed. And so now he has an appointment with a specialist in St. Louis next month, and hopefully he'll get a diagnosis that will stick. Um, I think it's pretty evident by this point that he does have Parkinson's, but for whatever reason, it's just a hard thing to diagnose. And I, I would assume that's because there isn't any kind of a test. You know, they can't run blood work and get results back and say, yep, you have this. They essentially have to just examine a bunch of different symptoms and come to the conclusion that you know, all signs point to yes. Um, so that's really the diagnosis process for Parkinson's disease. And so I chose that for my continuing education because, you know, there is a personal benefit to someone in my life who could use it. Um, and then also my other continuing education course, which I haven't started yet, but I will once this one's complete, is on autoimmune disorders. And this one is a heavy focus for me because my grandma that just died in July, she had chronic lymphocytic leukemia, which is actually a type of non-Hodgkin lymphoma, which is autoimmune. It is an immune system cancer or a cancer of the immune system, also called a blood cancer. Um, and my boyfriend, Michael, actually has what they call the sister cancer to hers. His is cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. And kind of the difference is his, it is certain T-cells that are affected, whereas my grandmother, it was B-cells. Um, and then for him, the cutaneous means skin. And so his affects his skin. It shows itself in little patches that kind of look like rosacea or something, in all honesty. And it's a really, really rare um, non-Hodgkin lymphoma. It's chronic. So it's, you know, you have it for years and years and years before, you know, anything bad happens. Um, and my grandma's was the same way. Hers was chronic. She had it for 15 years. And when she passed away, it wasn't actually because of that cancer. It, in a roundabout way, it was because she had a severe ulcer that was a result of the chemo pill that she was on. And she had been complaining about um, acid reflux for year, like a couple of years. And they never scoped her. They just kept telling her to take Tums. And fast forward two years, maybe three, I don't even know for sure when she started complaining about this, but it was a while. Um, she had an inflamed gallbladder and they decided to do gallbladder surgery. And it wasn't until after that surgery, she started having complications. It got really, really bad. And they finally scoped her and they found this ulcer and it was 10 inches long and an inch and a half wide. And she just couldn't, she couldn't heal from it. She couldn't eat, she couldn't drink, she couldn't keep anything down. And then her organs started shutting down and that was just it for her. Um, but because of this, so I have still my boyfriend has, his is an immune system cancer or a blood cancer as well. Um, essentially your own immune system is attacking itself, right? That's, that's what that means. Um, and then also, so my grandma has that. Her brother died of a type of leukemia. Another one of her brothers has the same non-Hodgkin lymphoma that she had. She has a niece with lupus. So these autoimmune disorders definitely run on her side of the family, which means I have an elevated risk for this as well. Um, 
And it is for that reason that I do what I do. And that's also why autoimmune is something that is of particular importance to me. Um, but this whole journey kicked off whenever my grandma was diagnosed. Before then, I had never been impacted by cancer personally. No one close to me had ever had it. Um, this was in late 2008 when she finally received her diagnosis. And at that time, I started researching basically just how does cancer happen? And as I learned more, I started adjusting my own lifestyle, my own habits, my own consumption of food. And, you know, over the course of several years, I kind of went from being pretty ignorant to nutrition. You know, it was the basics food guide pyramid. That's what we grew up on. And that was about the extent of it, which is pretty standard for most Americans. Um, that's just, that's how we learn. And so then I learned the importance of, you know, locally farmed and avoiding preservatives and growth hormones and all of those kinds of things and switching to organics. And from there, I learned more about some of the negative effects of red meat. And so these are things that a lot of us have heard, but I did a lot of kind of deeper reading and research on it. Um, I kind of obsessive over it, honestly. And so eventually I kind of switched more to like a Mediterranean style diet. And it just, the more that I read, the more that I researched, the more that I learned, um, the less I could argue with myself over the benefits of a plant-based diet. Um, you know, all of the evidence was there. It was staring me in the face and I was having a lot of internal struggles with myself. Meat, didn't really care that much about meat. I was never that worried. I was always a big veggie eater. So meat just wasn't a huge thing for me. I ate it, of course, but to give it up was not hard for me. It was definitely the dairy. And I grew up lactose intolerant. I couldn't have like milk or ice cream. I could, but not very much of it. I'd be sick and feel like crap. Um, but cheese, I could always stomach. And so I ate the heck out of cheese and I loved that. And I was like, man, I don't even know. And eggs, I, I liked eggs too. So those were kind of the two things. So I guess I kind of went through a little bit of a period where I was like a lacto-avo vegetarian in the process of switching to plant-based. And yeah, I just, I reached a point where I couldn't argue with the evidence anymore. I couldn't even pretend to turn a blind eye to it. I was like, you know, if I, if I keep denying this, I know what I'm doing to myself ultimately. And the reason I'm doing what I'm doing is specifically for disease prevention. I want to live a long, healthy life. I don't want to get cancer. I mean, we're always at risk for it, but our diet and lifestyle choices drastically reduce our risk of not only cancer, but all chronic illnesses. Um, so, and you know what they say, a ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And that's, that's my goal. That's what I'm doing. Um, so promoting health and longevity as I sit here nasally with the cold. <laughs> um, but that is something that I will bring to you guys too from time to time. Um, it's not my primary focus. I think at this point, I just live this lifestyle so much that it's not something I really talk about a lot necessarily anymore, but I can definitely make it a point to do that, um, to kind of provide some benefit to any of you who are watching this, if you want to learn more. And certainly as I'm taking these two courses, I'll be sure to share things that I'm learning. So if you're interested in learning about holistic nutrition, which holistic, you know, essentially meaning non-medicine based. So nutrition that is working as medicine, you know, as Socrates said, let thy food be thy medicine and the medicine be thy food, or maybe vice versa. I'd have to look that up to remember what order it was in for sure. Um, but that is what I will bring to you. And I should be starting that course coming up this week. So you'll be hearing a little bit more about it here soon. Thank you.